the Chris Fade Show, as we do it across the country. Uh, I love motivational stories. Yes, for sure. And uh, over the years, we've had uh, the, the opportunity of chatting to some very motivational people who, who not only come and motivate the three of us in the studio, but motivate the population that are listening to us right yeah, now. Yeah, for sure. And uh, in studio, I want to welcome, please, John Register. Good morning. Chris Fade, what's going on, everybody? <laughs> How are <laughs> doing in the UAE, baby? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Listen to that voice. <laughs> I'm, I am motivated. I could close the interview right now right and I'll now. be happy. Um, Happy to be here. Thank you so much for coming through. Welcome, welcome to the UAE. I, I'm so honored to be here. You know, I can't believe the, um, the U.S. consulate brought me over here to hang out in, uh, so in cool. Dubai and the UAE. Yeah. Uh, originally from Colorado, or is that's where you're, you're residing? So, uh, we live there now in Colorado, okay. but uh, uh, was raised on the west side of Chicago. And nice. uh, went to school down in Arkansas, did a whole lot of work. But uh, we're now in Colorado, great state. You all say it's cold there. I say it's just nice and uh, warm, <laughs> balmy temperature as right now. No, a little, <laughs> so a, of a little place called Aspen. Aspen is a beautiful place. Uh, great skiing out there. Have you been? Uh, no, I just know it from Dumb and Dumb and Dumb. Dumb and Dumb. Yeah. Watched Dumb and Dumb. Dumb and Dumb. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> John, what what a remarkable story. Um, Obviously, there's been some highs, there's been some lows, there's been some highs again. Um, let, let's let's run through the the basic story of John Register. Yeah, thanks for asking that, uh, Chris. You know, a lot of times in life, what, things happen in our lives, and so my life was no different than many other lives. Uh, I had goals, dreams, aspirations. One was to make the Olympic team, uh, and in the 400 meter hurdles, I went across a hurdle when I was doing a training session after going to two Olympic trials landed awkwardly, dislocated my left knee, severed the artery behind the kneecap, and seven days later became an amputee. Wow. And so you think about that, it's just devastating, you know, what's life now, and, and we have these fears, I had fears. My fears were, will my wife, Alice, still stick around? Will my son still see me as his dad? Will he still value me? How do I see myself? Will I still have a job in the Army? And my wife, God bless her, she says, um, you know, John, we'll get through this together. It's just our new normal. Wow. And as she says this, you know, we begin to retool life again. I start swimming for physical therapy. 22 months later, after my uh, injury, I make the Paralympic swim team go to 1996 in Atlanta. Four years later, I have made late, a leg made for running and win the silver medal in Sydney, Australia. As your Aussies out there, Aussie, Aussie, yeah, Aussie, yeah. Boy. Uh, <laughs> I had a great time, won the silver medal in the, in the long jump, becoming one of two people in the world to jump over 17 and a half feet, about uh, five and a half meters uh, without a leg or knee. Yeah. Unbelievable. Wow. So you've gone to the Olympics for three different sports. Did you sports, say long jump? Long jump, 100 meters and 200 meters in, in Paralympic sport. And okay. then high hurdles, 400 meter hurdles for the be, before I lost the leg. So I wasn't on the team, but I qualified for the Olympics. Unbelievable, uh, John. Yeah, in the championship. Congratulations, obviously. I Cheers, mean, well, yeah, that, that is great. beautiful. Can, can we go back to that injury? Um, who no, let's not. Yeah. No. <laughs> no, 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 here we go. Yeah, but, let's go. Let's but go. Who, who, would have, who would think? Yeah doing hurdles that such an injury could result in the in the, in the removal of the leg it's it's a uh, this must have been a one in a million a, it's one in a million it's, it's, i'm the only one that i know of so far um and hopefully no one else has that that opportunity because what happens is in hurdles hurdles are designed to fall forward sure and so usually when you fall in the hurdle you, you push your hands out and maybe an arm is broken or a finger is broken or something but never a leg a leg always goes down and you're you're fine you roll tumble but for me on this occasion, something happened where the leg was in the wrong position and it hyperextended. And that broke the artery behind the kneecap. And that, that's what did me in. The moment that you were told by the... I, interesting, I remember uh, many years ago, I had, a, I had an eye issue and, I, and a doctor came in and said, there's an 80% chance of you losing your eye. Hmm. And, I, and, hmm. and I went through the, can I drive? Oh my gosh, what am I going to do? Oh my gosh, will my girl stay with me? All that sort of stuff. Thankfully, it came back. That moment that they told you that, hey, we're going to have to take the, le the leg away, how how is that? How do you, how you, do you know, explain that to someone that is walking around right now? I, th I think but. you know it was a choice. Uh, I was given the choice to keep my leg, use a walker or wheelchair for the rest of my life, or take the amputation and use a prosthesis for the rest of my life. And just like that choice is very difficult, it's hard. It's our own choices that we have to make in life. We also have to make them when we are in our redefining moments. So s same thing when you with your eye. You know what do you do in the, in that case? And it's our families, our friendships that are the most critical people that come around us at this time. But we have to make that decision for us, ourselves, and no one else can do that for us. And so that was the, the the hardest part was to say, okay, I'm going to take the leg off and see what life is going to hold for me afterward. 
John F. Register on Instagram if you'd like to follow. John F. Register on the gram. More with John next. I want to talk about going from such lows and how to pick yourself up out of that. Next here, Virgin Radio. Virgin Radio 104.4, the Chris Fade Show, inspirational, motivational man in studio yeah. with us right now. John Register, one more round of applause. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, we've just heard the story randomly. Uh, can I just say, in the Army as well. Yes. So this was before and after the accident in the Army. I was in the Army, and I went through the, the, actually the Gulf War without a scratch, without anything, came back home without a scratch. I would have been, I think, in triage, Better off if I'd have been in the military in battle than I, when I was in Hayes, wow. Kansas, because I would have had the triage faster from the battlefield. <laughs> You're joking. Where it, it took almost 90 minutes when I was uh, on, on the track that day. So, so that's what really kind of did me in. So to put life into perspective and just the scenarios and, and when it's happened, it's going to happen. John was in the Army, fought in battle yeah. and, 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 and came out fine. John is now on a track doing hurdling, jumps over a hurdle dislocates and, 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 and hyperextends, hyperextends his yep. knee, uh, severs an artery, and, and loses his leg hurdling. Yes. In, wow. Okay. The biggest thing is, and, and pe- there are people right now who are going through their own issues. Uh, yes. Nothing to do with an amputee or whatever it is they're going through, maybe a divorce, a breakup, anxiety, depression, whatever it is, their workplace. You would know now, and what can you pass on knowledge of taking yourself from a low and just getting yourself back up again? Yeah, that's that's great. You know, when when people are are in that space, they they first I think initially have these fears, and these fears hold them back from who they connect to become. They don't know what is next, and there are these fears of the other individuals, other people believing for them what they can or cannot do, which is based upon what they believe they could or could not do if they were in that situation in the first place. And then we have societal fears as well. What has society told me about myself? in this particular instance. Uh, and then we go to the kind of another tier of the uh, the equation, and that is we be, believe we're gonna redefine ourselves, we're gonna rebuild ourselves. But in this case, uh, it's a false summit. We're not climbing the mountain all the way. We think we're at the top of the mountain, but I think I'm gonna get my leg back. I think I, if things just become normal, if I just get my girlfriend back, if I just get my, my life back, everything's fine. But it's not fine because we don't get those things back. And so in this redefining moment, we have to choose what it is we're going to amputate in order to release to our new normal existence. And we find it's not a rebuild at all. It's actually a rebirth. Just because I'm an amputee doesn't mean that I know everything about being an amputee. Right. So I have to relearn this. I'm rebuilding. I'm rebirthing. I'm, I'm, I'm learning how to walk again, learning how to run again, learning how to exist as this new individual. And then that will create, Chris, a resolve. When I'm resolved, when I'm resolute in myself, I'm not going to go back to what other people are thinking. I'm going to move forward in who I am right now, and you're not going to tell me. Give you a case point. After the, after the, the long jump in Sydney, I was asked by a reporter, says, uh, John, you ran against Carl Lewis um, and jumped against Carl Lewis. You, you ran against Michael Johnson. In this case of having an artificial limb, could you do that again? And I thought about her question for a moment. I said, no. But God forbid, if, if Carl Lewis or Michael Johnson lost a leg, could they run as fast or jump as far as I do? And that's the shift. That's the narrative that people have to get to. And that's the total resolve. And that equals our liberation. It equals our total freedom. But the freedom is not for us. The freedom is to liberate others. It's to create legacy for other individuals to cross the bridges that they're struggling with. So well said. Wow. Beautiful. I'm on, I'm, I'm on your Instagram right now. You're very, very busy man. Yeah, we're very busy, man. The consulate has me busy over here. <laughs> this is great. Um, can anyone come? Uh, are you are you appearing anywhere in the uh, UAE, even even on this trip, but maybe next trip? Is there anything that we can come out to see you? I, I would love to come back. I'm having, heading over to Abu Dhabi uh, this, this afternoon, great. and we're going to uh, meet uh, with the uh, the ambassador, uh, the U.S. ambassador. Amazing. Uh, and we've done some great work here, and I'm going to mess all the names up of <laughs> everything. <laughs> but uh, you have to all. You have me help me out, uh, um, Her Excellency. Uh, we met with her yesterday and over the youth uh, program, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Josh Shana, and uh, it was amazing to see everything that's happening in the OE, especially for for youth. Yeah. And one of the things we're talking about with people with disabilities is we when we go to some of these schools and we see the amazing artwork that's coming out. You know, as you as you look at entrepreneurship, I think that some of those individuals should be in inside of the of uh, the Emirates Towers because they have great programs, great products that they are producing. Uh, And just like people that are what we call quote unquote normal, 
those who have disabilities have exactly the same thing to to offer. So people's determination are 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 just as, as valuable as, as anyone else. So I I love the work that she's doing over there. Well, thank you to the U.S. Consulate for bringing uh, John into the studio this morning as well. Always appreciative. If you want to know more about John or follow him, go to John F. Register on the gram. Uh, keynote speaker, uh, you, you you are you are fabulous in 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 what you've just done in the ten minutes here on Virgin yeah. Radio. Well, I, I appreciate the time. You all are fabulous. Thank you Thanks so much. Give me a big round of applause. Yeah. Thank yeah. you again. Yeah.